legitimate Nintendo emulation for iOS, for iPhone and iPad. You know that on iOS, it's always been shaky grounds. You can get it to work and then all of a sudden Apple puts out an update and well, it stops working and then you have to get back to ground zero and try to do it again. Probably another emulator. It's always been somewhat a, a thing that you not supposed to be really doing on iOS until now. Now in the app store, we have the Delta emulator for Nintendo emulation, right? For several Nintendo consoles. And you can simply go to the app store, download the Delta emulator and play Nintendo games on iOS. Not nothing new. I've been doing this on other devices outside of iOS, but now to be able to have it on iPhone on the go and to play with a controller like the Backbone One, the floodgates have opened up for all our iOS users out there. And well, this is just the beginning of continued emulation. I'm kind of happy about this because now I can play these retro games and not have to play it on my console or some other device because I'm not a daily Android user. And now I can use it on the go wherever I go. And it's all local, not bound by an internet connection, which is the fantastic thing about emulation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Delta emulator in the app store on your iPhone, how to install ROMs. Let's do it beginning to end and how to get these games working on iPhone legitimately for now. We'll see how long this lasts. Nintendo, they may not like it, they may just let it pass up. It's Apple. It's a very big company they have to go up against to try to file a lawsuit against. And Apple may not just bow out so easily. We'll see. Let's just set it up for now and get ourselves playing for now. Let's do it. Here we are in the App Store for iOS. And it's nothing but a simple search for Delta emulator in the App Store. So if you look up there on the top of your screen right there, that's what the icon looks like. I don't know what the icon represents. Don't ask me. All right. And that's the application. As you can see, I already have it installed and it's called the Delta Game Emulator all in one for, well, it says all in one GBA iOS, but there are multiple consoles you can emulate on this particular emulator. So if we scroll down, we'll look at the versions when we click into it and you'll see here that we have several Nintendo consoles, Nintendo Entertainment System, original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color. I never actually really delved into that, so I'm interested to see what titles we got going on there. Game Boy Advance, one of my favorites, Nintendo DS. Woo, that is a good one. And plenty more to come. So we are expecting to see probably more Nintendo consoles, possibly the GameCube, and hopefully the Wii, we can get our Metroid Prime Trilogy, which I am excited to play if we can get those consoles on this emulator. All right, so that's all there is to it. You basically just get this, download it, install it, no side loading, loading, no side loading, I don't know, my tongue got lost. No side loading, Lord, why can I say that word? No side loading, loading, <laughs> loading, la, 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 la. I'm gonna get this right. No need for side loading, with this particular emulator, straight install, legitimate from the iOS store. So take advantage while you can, if this is something you've been looking to do on iOS without the super immediate threat of revocation with the next update of iOS. All right, so here we are in an app view for whatever reason, this does not play nicely over uh, capture cards, uh, the emulator itself, at least when you're on, you're in the menus and on the home screen, it doesn't work. But once you launch a game, you'll be able to do some screen capturing via uh, the game. And I'll show you in a second. Once you install it, you just open it and you are presented on a home screen. Right now it's GBA, but as you swipe and you look at the top, if you see at the top, we are on GBA. And if you swipe through N64, Super Nintendo, Nintendo DS, as you can see, I already have some games installed on the emulator. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's really nothing there, just how many panels you have, which is correlates to the amount of consoles you have here. All right, so um, I've installed a few games and they're working beautifully. All right, so we can just, just by tapping a game, for example, we'll see that we have, I don't know, Nintendo 64, let's just launch the Castlevania and you go 
right into the game. You see you have a nice little skin here and this is the Nintendo 64 game layout and we can just press A to get started. You have some menu options. When you press the menu button, it pauses the game. You have save state, load state, cheat codes. I haven't delved into cheat codes yet because well, I'm not a cheater. What? Fast forward to play the game fast or if you have like dialogue going, you could just like fast forward through it. Some of these uh, role playing games can have a lot of dialogue and you have hold buttons, which you can set to hold, select the button to hold, which is like for a speed shooting if you want to press it continually. And we are already gaming on Nintendo 64 Castlevania and it runs buttery smooth. Now we're going to exit for now so we can get into how we get these things installed. Now there's nothing to it but to do it. You basically just press the plus button up here to add a game. The game will be downloaded to your files and I've created a ROMs folder and you see I have some ROMs already pre-installed all zipped. I didn't have to unzip anything. It runs right off of a zip format. I can add uh, Batman, which I have not yet added. Uh, Bionic Commando. I don't recall adding that, but I'll leave it like that for now. But let's look at uh, Grand Theft Auto. There we go. So I'm going to add Batman and Grand Theft Auto. All you have to do is open and it will open in the respective console screen that it applies to so this applies to gba and you'll see that batman has been installed and you'll see grand theft auto it has in fact along with installing and now showing and populating on your screen auto applied the game cover art yes some of these games don't always come with cover art in their particular database where you search but for the most part all of them as you can see here so far have cover art for this game here, Ninja 5.0, very obscure and unknown, but good game. That is for GBA. Doesn't have any cover art currently in the database. So the way you would find cover art is you would long press on the game itself. It, for whatever reason, launches the game and starts running in the background because that's just the way Apple uh, iOS runs. And it's already playing the game and it's ready to start. But if you select change cover art, you'll see that there is a games database here. And from there, you can also download the cover art yourself if you want to get nice and fancy and take extra steps. I'm a little lazy for that. So we're going to go with whatever's in the database for now. And you'll see that there are two versions of it. The current one that we have is this one here, but we're going to switch it to the Grand Theft Auto dark version theme. We'll select that and it has switched. And the same goes for this as well. If you change the artwork for the Batman game, go to database. You see there are other versions here. Oh, this one looks kind of cool. Batman Vengeance. I like this one though, because you can see Batman more clearly. So we're going to keep it with that. And well, very simple, not a lot going on with adding cover art to it. Like I said, you can download it and save it to your photo gallery and apply it. But that's just a scenario here. Now, let me show you a scenario where there is no cover art. Like some games will come like this and it does have cover art. You just have to search for it in the game database and apply it for Ninja 5.0. For whatever reason, there was no cover art change cover art. I went to the games database and it came up like that with just the same thing. And if I kind of try to search for it, it finds other games with the name Ninja, but you'll see that even some other games don't have cover art when you search for it. So most do, many don't. So you have Ninja Turtles of every kind of Game Boy Advance. But for this particular game, there is no cover art, unfortunately. So in that scenario, if I was really finicky about it, I'll go and download the JPEG from somewhere and then just download it to my phone and apply it to this particular cover art. But for now, we'll leave it like that. Going into settings, you'll see that it shows the consoles that you have. Six different Nintendo consoles. You have other settings for touchscreen. You can add multiple <laughs> controllers for all my multiplayers out there and map them to your phone. And you can have two, three, and four players. Controller opacity, that's just the on-screen opacity if you want to see the skin. Haptic feedback if using the touchscreen. That's probably something you want to do because you want to know when you're pressing the button, if you're hitting it or not, because 
when you don't have that happy feedback, you're going to be looking at the game, but not really looking at the buttons as you're playing, which is kind of, I don't like playing with just a glass. I need a controller. Controller sticks, yes, you want to enable that. You can add home screen shortcuts, so you can add Metroid Prime, respectively, to your home screen. Tap it like it's a game, it'll automatically launch Delta, and you're in the game itself. Pretty cool. You can sync your data, right? So if you're playing on an iPhone, you can go here to your service and sync it to your iPad. So this is for syncing your game, save data, save states, and cheats between devices. You can save all of your data into Google Drive, for example, which is what I use, or Dropbox, right? And then you have to sign in if you're not signed into those services. Then if you click into something like one of the emulators here, right? These are skins for Nintendo, for example. You can add, remove skins. This is the main skin. There's another landscape skin here. So these are the two different modes, whether you're playing in portrait or landscapes. You want to customize your skins. You can go into there and customize skins if you like. I just use default. I don't even use the on-screen uh, controllers. So that's not something I would use. I'm going to use an actual controller. And well, that is the gist of the entire app mostly, right? Not much else to get yourself started in playing, but let's go ahead and see how this plays with a controller, which is my favorite controller, the Backbone One, right? So with that, you can play emulation, you can play cloud gaming, you can play remote game playing and local games for iOS now, because now iPhone, iOS, has local games like Resident Evil and the such, which you can play natively. Let's switch over to the controller and see what that looks like in actual gameplay. All right, so here we are with the Backbone One gaming controller, my favorite mobile gaming device that I use for iPhone because of its compactness and just being able to work plug and play and it has the ability to charge here listen to audio i guess if you want to use a 3.5 millimeter jack connection for your headphones and well the buttons are actually quite nice on this as well i like the triggers and i like the bumpers so pretty nice and snazzy here and well now with the gen 2 version of this device it works with a case right you can actually have your case on and play with this device. And just by sliding it in like that, I do have a pretty thick metal metallic looking case, though it's made of like some kind of silicone. You can see here on the back, very metallic and roughly thick kind of case. And it fits nice and snug on my iPhone with space to spare. So the case could be even thicker than what this case is right here. So we can click on the emulator and I already have a game going and I have disabled all on-screen buttons. It does it automatically once you connect the Backbone remote. If I disconnect from the Backbone, you'll see that the on-screen buttons show, right? If you wanted to play on-screen, but once I connect that USB-C, the emulator detects that you have a controller connected and it disables the on-screen controls. Right out of box, I have not changed any controller configuration whatsoever as a matter of fact this is the first time me loading this game and it works pretty nice here which buttons do i use to shoot oh this is menu up here so maybe some mapping i would have to do i think to play the way i like to play so you'd have to map your own buttons and play the way you'd like to play but this is pretty much working nicely i can use the d-pad to play if i wanted to very responsive very real-time response so you will have a great time playing any of these games here. I can press start here on the backbone. So this actually interacts with it, which is awesome. I can go to main menu, go to Grand Theft Auto. Let's play that over GBA. And we are playing Grand Theft Auto Advance for Game Boy Advance. Quite nice. Wow, look at the graphics on this. If you are into retro things the way I am, then, uh, you're going to get a lot of fun out of this. So, uh, yeah, swipe over. Let's go to a whole different console altogether and let's play some Castlevania here. Here we are with a 3D version of Castlevania. How cool. Oh, wow. I just got hit by a tree. How is that possible? Now you'll find that some of these games, you can't have camera control. That's just 
not the way these games kind of worked on GBA. There you have it, Tekken Gamer Fam. Gaming on your iPhone via emulation for Nintendo via the Delta app. I think it's awesome. I can't wait to start delving into a lot of these retro games because I'm definitely a retro gamer in heart, right? I do play a lot of modern titles, but I kind of balance it out with going back to the basics and being able to play offline and I have to depend on patches and updating and network connectivity. It's kind of a breath of fresh air in some instances. But let me know what you think. If you need any more details, any questions regarding setup of this emulator, please leave those uh, questions in the comments because I always answer all of the questions in the comments. Love interacting with you guys out there. I learn a lot from you. Some stuff I just don't know. You guys put me on to a lot of stuff. So thank you for that. Hopefully I provided some value. If so, be sure to like, subscribe for more upcoming stuff regarding mobile gaming because I do a lot of that because I'm always particularly on the go, especially going to work and sometimes just sitting on a couch or laying in bed. I don't want to run to the room where my computer console is, where I game because I'm a PC gamer. Sometimes I just like to sit somewhere remotely in the house, even outside and just in the summertime anyway, not in the winter, and play games on my particular iPhone, right? A lot of us are mobile gamers because we always have our mobile devices with us. And well, sometimes you're just there and you need something to do. You got some retro gaming you can do if you have your controller somewhere nearby. You have it in your back pocket. What? All right, take it to gamers. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Later.